Joining us now is the former NBA All-Star and NBA on TNT commentator now, Chris Weber. Also joining us, sports journalist, host of the new podcast, Unbothered, and contributing writer for The Atlantic magazine, Jamel Hill, and sports journalist, Carrie Champion. Jamel and Carrie are new co-hosts of the new show, Stick to Sports, on Vice TV. This is an awesome group. We're so glad to have you all with us. Chris, I want to start with you. Uh, we played the clip a couple times on this show yesterday. We saw in your face the, the pain, the frustration, the exhaustion. Uh, we've come to know you, those of us who followed you and loved you as a player, as this larger than life figure. And there was so much humanity and there was so much about a shared experience among so many Americans. What were you feeling when they came to you that night on TNT? Well, thank you for having me on, and uh, can't wait to see Jamel and Kerry show because they're not going to stick to sports. It's a funny name, um, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I felt um, I felt pain. You know, it's the pain of growing up in Detroit. You know, when we see these speeches and we see conventions, everybody um, um, brings in their personal story, and I think what people need to understand is that we have the same stories. You know, not only do I want to make sure that we address the killing of unarmed black men and women, but at this time, we should address education as well. People like myself get a better chance at education coming from where I come from than those in my neighborhood or that have the same zip code because I can play sports. My mother was a teacher for over 20 years in Detroit, and she used to talk about um, the inefficiencies and how the fact that the marginalized didn't get the same resources as the others. And so this is not just unarmed killing. This is not just education. This is just not... Uh, black women dying at the hands of white doctors um, um, in childbirth. And this is everything. I think everyone needs to understand we have families, mothers, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts. And so we're affected in every single way that every other American is. And uh, we just want to make sure that you hear our stories and don't just look at what we make or the platforms that we have, but hear our stories. If you appreciate how we got here and we're inspiring you, then let us tell you what we've overcome. And then hopefully we can make change so it'll be easier for others behind us. So, Chris, what is the impact of all these guys, you know, some of them who you've played with, getting together and walking out of these games? First of all, in your eyes, what do they want to see? And second of all, what does it mean to have them step away from those playoff games? They may come back today or they may come back tomorrow. But what is the statement that they've already made? Well, the statement that they made is that I'm on your show speaking to you in the morning. You, you know, the statement that they made that kids all over the world are talking about this. White fathers have to have this conversation with their sons and tell them why the players decided. Black fathers have this conversation with their sons and inspire their sons and say, this is what they're doing and they're fighting for you. Um, I just applaud the players. I really don't care um, how it came about because I think that impulse is the... Impulse is what makes everything work. And so I'm glad that they acted upon empathy, sympathy. I'm glad that they acted upon their passion. And so what I did, I think it did, was start a new conversation. You know, I watch the news constantly. I follow the news, and I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated with the lack of follow-ups on questions. I'm frustrated with the fact that nobody will say, you're a liar. I'm frustrated with the fact that everybody, everybody um, is implicit in this. That's what I feel in the media. And that fatigue of, of news, that fatigue of media, um, I think that um, they put a boost back in. They shine a light back on the deaths, back on um, the injustices here. And I really do think that those conversations are needed before everyone turns a deaf ear to those that we should trust in the media. Yeah, you know, Jamel, it's interesting that uh, that's exactly what I was thinking as um, – I was watching what happened last night and the night before that there is such an exhaustion of uh, 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 following news, cable news, and such an exhaustion of following politicians, such an exhaustion following fact checkers, who's lying, who's not lying. When you have players that Americans look up to, uh, Republicans, Democrats, independents, they walk off the field. It starts a conversation that no politician, no radio or TV talk show host could ever start, right? I mean, is that not in the end this, the, the most significant part of these walkouts? Um, first, let me just say that uh, when Chris spoke from the heart the other night, um, it moved me to tears. Mm -hmm. um, it was really powerful and compassionate and, and compelling. And his mother taught at my high school. 
So I understand what he talks about when he uh, discusses being from Detroit and our neighborhoods and, and what it means for people to see him and even me on TV talking to you now. So uh, thank you for sharing that, Chris. Um, but, you know, the exhaustion that you talk about, Joe, is an exhaustion that a lot of Black people collectively feel. We're tired of having to, frankly, beg for our humanity. We're tired of when yeah. something happens to George Floyd or Jacob Blake or cases like that or Breonna Taylor, that we that it turns into a debate where there are people trying to both sides what we consider to be terrorism against black people. And the great thing about sports and why it is uniquely positioned to have these kind of uncomfortable conversations is that it's the one thing we do in this country that brings everybody together. Um, we may be on different sides politically, but we might both root for the Pistons or both root for the Lakers. Um, and because we're in the same space, if LeBron James is saying, hey, you need to pay attention to this, if you have NBA players and Major League Baseball players and Major League Soccer players telling America that this is an issue that we need to confront, then those who may have closed minds or narrow minds may be willing to at least understand why their favorite athlete or why their favorite team finds this important. Why are the Mets putting down a shirt that says Black Lives Matter? So it's stoking something so that we can finally mm -hmm. confront not just our ugly racial past, but our current ugly racial present. And what a powerful way to reach Americans and to start those conversations in their homes as families between parents and children. And Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.